Welcome back to Podex. So today's episode is going to be a really exciting one because I have someone who I really look up to. I actually came across her profile a few months back. So it was uh, her name is Avanti Nagraj. So Avanti, I'll tell you this. I actually came across your video where you were creating music on the go, which is uh, there was a live audience in front of you and you started creating music on the spot. And that was when I dived into all your other videos, and it was really amazing because you just don't speak about music. You talk about mental health. You talk about patriarchy. You talk about feminism. So there's so much to this, and all the content that you create that it'll be hard for me to just wrap it up all in this one podcast. Your whole head, your whole brain. But I'm going to try and do as much as I can possible. So I'm super excited to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me and for the very kind introduction. Um, the just you know that little segment you're referring. To, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. So I'm glad that you found me through that because I'm very happy to hear that. So I wanted to directly dive into a hard topic, which is I asked you really before. Okay. I I've been reading about this over the past three or four days. Actually, the I mean the past three or four weeks, which is about. patriarchy femi- feminism and misogyny and you're someone who's inspiring women all around you across the globe not just india so what is your definition of women empowerment you know i'm glad that you used the word empowerment because when we think about equality right and how to kind of smash the patriarchy the word equality is important but I feel like it's a little hard to achieve because when you think about the difference between the sexes, right? I'm not talking about gender here. I'm talking about just the biological sex. There are so many physical. Just for example, males cannot give birth. <laughs> Females, on average, are smaller and not as strong as males are, right? And so there are these things that make it systemically and biologically impossible for us to be equal. what can be controlled however in my opinion is opportunity and the access to resources and you know the mobility in society so i find that the word that i prefer to use is equity because when things are equitable right you provide resources according to the need and you are able to kind of create an open playing that's really, really important when i think of women empowerment specifically i think of women and you know women identifying folks but also allies supporting each other it there's of this competitiveness that has been ingrained into women you know women pitting each other against one another um whether that's romantically or professionally and a lot of it stems from the fact that we feel that there is only one place that we can occupy if one woman makes it then the rest can't in that specific field because oh the place has been taken um but actually that itself is a product of the patriarchy has for the longest time made us feel that way made us feel that there is only that one space because it's such a narrow space instead i think with women empowerment the more we grow and better the bigger we can create the ecosystem for you know i've been reading about this like you said that uh, women think that there's one space which has been taken and there's no more space available for other women and they become uh competitive but so i've been reading about this actually there's something known as women feel more imposter syndrome than men feel so what they feel is that they don't have a place with men above them and all that stuff so even in shell sandberg's book lean in she spoke about this that uh, there was a board meeting which she had held with women and men together so what happened was women didn't come and sit on the table they sat up they sat uh, at the corner over there which was they were kept chairs kept aside and they didn't come and sat, sit at the table even after shell sandberg invited them they said no they were not comfortable coming there so what happens is the thing is it's been passed on since ages from the stories which generations have been told, telling each other and because of that what has happened is women think that they are not equal to men so it's not just a men's problem it's a women's problem because i think it's not just a women's problem it's a men's problem because i think if men even get together in empowering women it will benefit the whole of society i completely agree with you and i actually a friend of mine um a youtuber actually had sent me lean in and i haven't read it yet i'm very excited to um i agree with you completely and what i'm saying is and what you're all saying is that it takes everybody 
it's not just a women's issue and the women supporting each other. It's everybody kind of creating that space. And part of it is because we feel conditioned to not take up space, right? You'll find even in conversation, let's say if I, and I saw myself doing this too, and I had to catch myself, let's say I'm making a point and being really assertive about it. Um, I will often add at the end, you know, what do you think? Or um, I hope you understand, or I'm sorry, but I just want to say this point as opposed to, you know, for most men, that's not even a thought. They'll be like, this sucks. Uh, I instead, or a lot of women instead would be like, well, I'm so sorry. I just want to let you know that I think this sucks, you know, <laughs> just that apologetic nature that like, we don't want to take up too much space verbally or exactly what you're saying. So I, I agree. I think it's, it's an everybody's issue. It's not just a woman's issue. Yeah. And I've been reading about this also because the way you said that when you say this sucks and all that stuff, what happens is people feel uh, women who speak up for themselves, uh, people find them to be way more ruthless, way more arrogant, way more competitive. And people wouldn't like having that someone as a colleague in their work environment. While if the men, if men do the same thing, it is considered as a positive aspect that, oh, he's working so hard, he's climbing up the ladders and all that stuff. So that's the thing which has been happening. But I had a question for you. What do you think men can do for this, for this, to fix this? What can we do for y'all? So the first, the first thing is exactly what you're starting with, reading, um, observing, and acknowledging that there's a problem, right? Uh, doing your own observational research as detailed as you and actually read about it systemically. Just observe. Do I take up space more? classmates or colleagues or counterparts um, it starts at home if say you have a sister uh, are there certain opportunities that you have that she doesn't have why and can you be somebody who is able to kind of make that small change and whether it's a conversation with your parents or even just your own behavior right um, I think it starts there it starts small uh, in general I think that when we have opportunities right? this idea of a glass ceiling or whatever it might be in a workplace, it, it's empowering others around us to give them those opportunities. Many a times there's a lot of job profiles where we don't associate women with them because we just haven't in the past, right? And so being intentional about that and all diversity choices, if you are somebody who runs your own company, I think is important. The other thing is systemically, part of it is a lot of policies are catered in a way that women don't feel as welcome. For example, maternity leave, right? Or um, an understanding if somebody's on their period and things like that. And there's a huge debate around that, right? But being equitable with that. If you have maternity leave, have paternity leave. You know, if you're offering paid or unpaid leave, do the same for the other and create those opportunities. Don't, you know, there are so many women who are, because they feel like, oh, but you'll have a baby in the next two years. You know, and it's that systemic thing which which is pervasive. I want to add two points to it. So basically, firstly, I want to tell that it's really good that India has the third largest maternity leave across the globe. So that thing which we can all be proud of. And uh, secondly, uh, like you said about maternity leaves and all that stuff, what happens is women don't take up new projects or larger projects because they feel that they're going to get married soon or they're going to have a baby soon. So that stops them from that prevents them from taking up uh, new projects or new opportunities which are passed on towards their way. Yeah, completely. But I also think that it starts at home, right? Let's say you choose to get married and you're in a partnership. Um, more often, the, the, the guy's career is priority. Exist, right? Because the idea is that the woman has to be the homemaker or caretaker or whatever. I think... The, the small change is we can divide those responsibilities. And it starts young, right? At home, if you have guests and you have, say, siblings, don't expect just the girl to go and make chai or whatever. Both need to. Yeah. And both need to be equally responsible. Only when there is you know, that equal sharing will there be both at home and professionally that you know equity. That's happened to me actually at my house. So what happens is um, whenever there are some guests, it's either my el I have an elder sister. I think she's your age. Yeah, she's your age. And what happens is that um, whoever comes first, so it's not she has to do it or only I have to do it. So if there's someone guest, if there's some unexpected guests who've come, 
either of us, whoever see it first, we will go and just get filled glass of water in a tray and get it and serve it to them. So it doesn't matter who it is, whoever sees it first. So that's how responsibilities have been divided. Then even in the kitchen, what happens is my mother makes me like help out in the kitchen and all that stuff. So now the good point is I know how to cook a bit. So that also really helps. Right? So I can, and really, yeah. It's a yeah. yeah, so I know one thing that I can survive if I go anywhere because I can cook a bit. So that isn't a problem. A lot of men will face that problem because they don't know how to do that. So I think that part is also really lucky. But I want to go to the next segment, which is about, you spoke about menstrual cycles, which is when women are in their periods. So why is it, why is periods considered such a taboo in India? Across the globe, you've, you've been in Boston and there you've seen a different experience and here it's different. So what have you noticed a change in differences in that? I think part of it is we don't, um, it's a lack of education across the board, right? And particularly among women. I'm not talking about people in metro cities like you and me who've been fortunate enough to go through at least our schooling, if not college. But across the board, generally, there is not that scientific understanding of what a period is. So for a lot of people, it has been, um, you know, seen to be this, this dirty thing that happens every month, right? And you'll see... A lot of, I think, twisted versions of religion that are shown where it's like, well, you're not allowed to enter the sacred place, you're not allowed to enter this kitchen, or you're not allowed to, you know, cultural norms and things like that. And that is stemming from truly just a lack of understanding, a lack of acceptance, and we don't talk about it, right? Um, it's an experience that women are meant to go through alone across our society, and, and it's not something we discuss, right? Um, you see it in school, I'm sure, you, when you were in offline class had to go to the bathroom and she was on your period she might have like really sneakily taken her pad or taken a friend in you know, a bag and something like that but <laughs> hey it's a normal product we all use it all the time you know um and so I think this shame around it right if you, you think about the names we have the names of the products stay free whisper like why do you whisper around it you know um <laughs> it's it's just the, the the psychology around it that we we've been conditioned to so I think a lot of it is having conversations at home, normalizing it. Your period conversation should not just be with your mother. They should also be with your father. And we have, if at all, people have sex education in schools. Um, I missed mine for some reason. Like we didn't have, I was switching schools and I missed it at both. But my brother, my younger brother, had, he was in the fifth grade. It was this one day, this one day, this doctor came in after that. They didn't talk about it at all. But that one day, um, separated and they were told about sex and things of that nature um the girls are separated and instead of being talked to about sex generally there should not be that gender-based separation it should be a conversation for everybody about everybody because if for no other reason you will have potentially a wife a daughter a sister a mother a blah 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 and it's also the process which allows any creature human creature to give life so i think it's just important that we have that understanding and that awareness. So like you said about, I've seen people, so in my school this actually happened, I've actually seen some of my close friends sneak it out, you know, they wrap it in newspaper and they'll take it out as if it's some illegal item and walk into the washroom and all that stuff. And there's another thing. So I had this first time, the first time I had this conversation with my friends was when I was in 10th grade. And mm. I, so that time it was really surprising because I've had the conversation at home, but it wasn't too much in depth. And then there's one of my close friends. So she's one of my best friends. And actually, she sent me the video of yours, which was really amazing. So because of oh. her, I came across it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she actually told me about this. She started talking about what periods is like and all that stuff. Because what happened is we were sitting at recess and one day she just got hyper mad. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why are you being so mad? And then she said that she just burst out. And she's like, there's so much of hormonal changes that take place. There are mood swings that occur after that and all that stuff. And that's when I realized that there's so much of ignorance around all boys and all men, which we don't know about. There's so much, there's so many troubles which you all face. There's so many problems which we as men are not aware of. So that's when I started reading. And recently I've also started diving. It's been two weeks since I've been reading a lot about PCOS and PCOD. So I'm trying to get an understanding to that. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of my sort of two or three podcasts lined up 
which are basically covering up these topics of patriarchy, feminism, PCOS, PCOD, periods, menstrual cycles. Because I think through this podcast, I want to personally impact people and change the mindset of men in society that it's a girl's problem. And huge, you know, more power to you. Really proud of you for that. Um, because it's, it's important. It's important to have those conversations. It's not just a particular space's problem. It's everybody's, right? And it's not even a problem. Periods aren't a problem. It's just understanding what it's like, all the changes that happen in your body. It's really, really important. And I want to come to the last one of the podcast, which is you've made a song on consent. So where did that come from mm-hmm. at such a young age? Like, even though you've been brought up in an urban city, how did that happen? So just could you tell us about that? Of course. Um, so I actually have a bunch of, my most recent single was on mental health, um, but I have a song specifically on consent as it relates to sex and just general permission coming out soon. Um, I think it's just really, really important to talk about these issues. And youth has nothing to do with it, right? In the, in the sense that um, I have the ability to have information at our fingertips. You and I have a question about anything, we can just Google it, right? Which didn't exist 10 to 20 years ago. Um, I mean, the fact that you are doing this at the age of 17 is amazing, right? And you're having these conversations. So for me as somebody who these things are important to me, I'm very passionate about them. It was important to me to figure out a way to make those topics really consumable and digestible. Um, you know, one way of creating impact is, for example, studying topics. And I did, I studied psychology, I studied global health, and, uh, you know, potentially doing something either academically or professionally there. But I think as, as I started growing my artist platform, I realized people love listening to music, people love consuming content. And that's because they feel like they can connect to somebody through their heart and their emotion and their soul. And if you're able to do that with somebody, then um, you have a deep connection where you can start talking about things that matter, right? So for me, I figured having a song about something or having conversations around things, it makes a huge difference because it's something that you're consuming, right? It's like if it's a song about consent, for example, that feels sexy, you will start to associate that with being sexy and consent is sexy. I mean, Getting anybody's yeah. consent is super important for anyone, right? Um, so that's kind of the, the motivation and that's why there's a lot of fun stuff coming which we're trying to create in, in that space. You know, you, talk, you spoke about how music impacts one's mind. So basically I was reading that there's a psychology study that uh, music, the, the type of music you consume actually changes the way you think. So a study found out that there was once a song that was played, which said, if played backwards, it was saying, drink marijuana, drink marijuana. I think you've studied in psychology. I think you might have studied that uh, case study. So uh, basically people who used to hear that song and all that did impact their mind. So like you said, music is very important and creating that right kind of music is going to be the next big thing. And you're doing a great job at that. Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. No, that means a lot. But wh- why do you think, so I'll tell you what I think about this. So basically consent, the problem is within the country because um, a lot of things have happened in the past if you look at it. So basically if you look before, when a husband came home drunk and all that stuff, he beat up his wife and she didn't say anything, then she was considered to be a good wife. Because she didn't talk about it. She didn't say about it. Yeah. Even if you look at the Indian laws, uh, marital rape isn't considered rape. So if you look at these, all these stories, all these yeah. laws that have been built to favor men is actually allowing. I think even there were recent court cases where a judge said if you marry the rape victim, uh, you can, you're set free or you'll get a bail or something like that. So I think that is one thing which oh. really needs to change. So what are your thoughts on that? I 100% agree. I think that, you know, most things that are taboo in society today are because we don't talk about them enough. And when I say talk about them, it's in the public, it's in, you know, top down governments, et cetera, et cetera. It's in schools. And it's those environments that build character and that will most influence, right? Especially when you're young. And it's harder to change your mindset the older you get. So, I feel like having those conversations, part of it is just, it's a, it shows a lack of respect, right? Um, consent is, is required from both partners. 
and it should be obtained from both partners. But usually, like if you just think about how, let's, let's take the example of sex, right? If you think about how sex is portrayed in the media or how it's portrayed in porn, which is where a lot of people learn about sex because they have lack of yeah. information. Um, sorry, my, my face is morphing. Um, <laughs> most of it ends when the, the male uh, receives pleasure, right? That's the end yeah. of the act. So there's a clear indication that male pleasure is the end of this act. Therefore, that is the most important thing. There's very little consideration of the other partner. And um, as a result, we just don't value that in the same way. And I think that talking about consent is so, 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 so important. It's, it should be as, as important as teaching somebody how to multiply, you know? It's just that we don't have that ingrained in us. Um, so I feel like if I feel very happy and confident when I see younger men like you who care so much about this. No, I'm serious, you know, because it, it makes a huge difference. It gives me faith and confidence that our generation will hopefully not perpetuate the same cycle. And we will create that thing because these are things that are extremely important and extremely valuable. You know, and, and consent, we need consent in everything, right? Um, think about, like in school, if you went on a school trip, what did you ask your parents to fill out? A con- consent. So we use this term, right? In, in so many other parts of our life, it's just how do you apply it to these interpersonal interactions, which are really important. Okay, that was a really amazing conversation. I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a lot more podcasts with you because there's so much more which we can dive in. There's so much more to learn from you. And do you have any last advice for the men out there? Like all men, what would you want to tell us? What, how should we do? What should we do? All men. <laughs> all men. Um, all men. All of you should. All of you should just respect human, humanity, right? And that includes yourselves and that includes women around you. And if you operate visible, you know, treating people around you, whether they are women or men, the same way in which you want to be kinder and nicer society. Uh, the second, I would say, is, you know, as we were discussing here, things that are, say, women's issues are not solely women's issues. They are human issues, right? And because they are part and parcel of the same space. Um, we, you know, a lot of people complain, why do we not have a men's day? I think we do. Um, but why do we not? talk about men's issues in the same way because by default men's issues have been the global issues right (laughs) um by default by that being the quote-unquote superior gender uh that's what we've had to deal with so it's it's about bringing that equity and bringing that together have those conversations don't shy away from it uh be like ayush and (laughs) (laughs) wonderful (laughs) thank you so much for being a part i had an absolutely great time me too. Thank you so, so much for having me. And um, I'm so proud of you for, for doing this work, this important work that needs to be done.